To early 17th century New England settlers, it was always an exciting event when they first sighted ships arriving from England. These ships, built in England, sailed by English crews under the command of English sea captains, carried people and goods to the New England settlements. The people were mostly Puritans, coming to America to worship in their own way, which they could not do in England. They brought with them news from home that the settlers in New England were always eager to hear. But more important, down in the holes of the ships were the cargoes the ships carried. Here were the possessions of the new settlers that they would exchange for land or livestock and seed for their farming. Here too were goods that English merchants were sending to New England for trade with the settlers there. These cargoes were important to New England settlers, most of whom were farmers. The New England farmer usually worked with tools made in Europe. He was able to get hoes, spades, and axes, saws, knives, and other important implements in trade for food he raised that he did not need for his own family. With his surplus products of agriculture, he was also able to get many items his wife wanted in the home. A Puritan wife, in order to make her home a comfortable place in which to live, had need of kettles of iron for cooking in the fireplace. She needed pewter ware, such as pitchers and platters, and many other kitchen utensils that came from England. And since women made and repaired the family's clothes, they needed thread, needles, thimbles, and pins for sewing. All such products came from England, too. So did much of the fine cloth they depended on for making the clothes themselves. Thus, New England farmers and their families were almost completely dependent on manufactured products from England brought on English ships. As long as the farmers could continue to trade their surplus agricultural products, for English manufactured goods, life in colonial New England would be pleasant and secure, and the settlers would continue to prosper. That was why English ships, bringing Puritans and valuable cargoes, were such a welcome sight to 17th century New England settlers. After 1641, few ships came to the seaports of New England to bring settlers. Because conditions had become more favorable for the Puritans in England, fewer were leaving. Merchants agreed that without English ships to bring in goods, the settlers could not trade their surplus products of agriculture. Without such trade, the New England settlements could not prosper. There seemed but one good solution to the problem. New Englanders would have to carry on trade themselves by building their own ocean-going ships. New England was well suited for shipbuilding. The coastline of the region was irregular, with many inlets and bays that made excellent harbors for ships. The many rivers that flowed into the ocean provided good locations for building ships. Many small vessels had been built on such rivers since the earliest days of settlement in New England. New England's great forests had already been used for providing English ships with tar and pitch and ship timber for spars, planks, and tall, sturdy masts. Shipwrights, men who had mastered the skills of shipbuilding in England, were employed to build a merchant fleet of ocean-going ships for New England. Wherever there was timber near the water's edge, shipbuilding developed, and many cities grew. Men came to work in Portsmouth, Newburyport, Salem, Newport, New London, and most important of all, Boston. And so began a great shipbuilding industry. Work was encouraged by English merchants who ordered many of the newly built ships since they could use many new vessels for England's growing sea trade with other parts of the world. The ships of New England merchants carried surplus agricultural products from the surrounding settlements for export. In the years that followed, the products of sea trade changed as agriculture declined in New England. 
Then the ships carried other products of this region and the other colonies to world ports. And shipping became New England's major industry. From Newfoundland and the Isle of Shoals off Maine, New England ships collected cargoes of fish and carried them to important markets in the islands of the West Indies. From New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, grains and meats were carried on New England ships to the Canary Islands as well as to the West Indies. From New England, the Middle Colonies, and North Carolina came products of the forests. Lumber, tar, pitch, and turpentine were needed in West Indian ports. In the West Indies, products were exchanged for money, sugar and molasses, or bills on London, which could be exchanged in London for money or goods. Some sea captains who had sold their goods for money sailed to London to buy English manufactured goods. Then these goods were brought back to New England for sale or trade. The ships returned to Boston with a variety of imported products. From Boston, smaller vessels distributed some of the goods to surrounding coastal settlements of New England. At these ports, the vessels picked up more New England products and returned them to Boston for export. Thus, Boston became not only an important 17th century shipbuilding town, but an important shipping and commercial center that contributed to New England's economic development. Newport, Rhode Island also developed as an important New England shipping center. In a similar manner, New York and Philadelphia grew to be centers of 17th century colonial commerce and contributed to the development of the middle colonies. These trading activities and methods of marketing goods were directly related to the use of New England built ships in world sea trade. But what was England's attitude toward this commercial activity of the colonies? English ships from earliest times dominated the trade in the southern colonies, where tobacco was the most highly valued and profitable product. In a series of laws known as the Navigation Acts, English lawmakers sought to control all colonial shipping. For example, this act of 1663 stated that European goods for the colonies must first be shipped to England. There, duties would be imposed before the articles were reshipped to the colonies. These laws were designed to give England a financial monopoly of the profitable colonial trade. But England could not control American sea trade. For merchant ship owners in America, such as those in Boston and other major ports, disregarded the Navigation Acts. They continued to trade directly in ports all over the world. And so, 17th century New England colonial settlers, the farmers, lumbermen, fishermen, skilled craftsmen, were able to obtain the goods they desired to make life in America as pleasant as it might have been in England. And for generations to come, shipbuilding and sea trade created a wonderful era of prosperity for the colonial settlers. Shipbuilding directly provided work for many people in the colonies. For the lumbermen and craftsmen such as the carpenter, the sailmaker, and the blacksmith. The shipping industry of New England contributed to the strengthening of the commercial, political, and social ties among all the colonies. Because of the prosperity brought by sea trade, the colonists had a better means to pay for imports from England. Their own colonial-built ships voyaged to the many ports of world trade. And so life became more pleasant and more secure for 17th century settlers. They were ensured a rising standard of living because of the prosperity brought to colonial America by shipbuilding and sea trade.